thanks for being here. Today, I want to talk about building with Foldy Do It Yourself Pro Audio RM5 Ribbon Microphone Kit. This is something that I just did. You can hear how it sounds. Who is Bumblebee Do It Yourself Pro Audio? Bumblebee Pro Audio is located in Latvia. And from their own website description, they are a boutique R&D and production company, a group of do it yourself audio enthusiasts, founded and led by Arthur Fisher, dedicated to DIY pro audio equipment and DIY driven microphones. I've done quite a bit of research on do it yourself audio equipment as well as building a lot of guitars and other sound effects. Bumblebee Pro was mentioned in several online videos and forums for the quality of the workmanship, but also for the results. I bought this kit a couple of years ago, and just recently built it. I was very busy with other projects and teaching, but now I'm getting to record my own songs and guitars. So I wanted a really microphone. I noticed that the public we currently have new kits and it looks like they've modified a few things slightly. But their online instructions were still very helpful with my bill. I will include the website address as well as some of the equipment and other videos that helped me. Why a ribbon mic? I have a few very good microphones, but I wanted to add a ribbon microphone to my collection. I wanted to try it out. Some of my favorite recordings were done using a ribbon mic. I was first introduced to ribbon mics when Justin Johnson showed how to use them on a video where he mic'd up his acoustic resonator guitar. It was magic to my ears. Since then, I found out that many great recordings throughout history used ribbon mics and they still do today. I prefer the sound, especially with an acoustic guitar, but also other instruments, and including electric guitars with the amp mic using a ribbon mic. They also do a great job with vocals. Ribbon microphones have an inherent high frequency roll that is similar to the way that we hear. In my opinion, ribbon mics have a warm and natural sound. Ribbon microphones can be a little pricey, running several hundred dollars in from well over $1,000 US. And if you've watched any of my videos, you probably realize that I'm a DIY kind of guy. I can build almost anything. And usually the quality in everything from musical instruments to car kits and electronics is just the attention that you give to certain parts of the field. So I did some research online, including do it yourself by your form and the whole new pro company kept coming up and then I found four videos of people building their own ribbon mic using their kit. So I decided to buy one. Give it a try. A little history about ribbon mic. There are ribbon mics that are not just a point. It was invented by Dr. Walter Chaffee, who obtained a German patent issued December 21st, 1924, the Siemens and the Kelsey. In the the armature of the mic is a light, corrugated ribbon of aluminum alloy. In fact, 2.5 microns thick for this kit. And that's smaller than the thickness of a human hair. The aluminum ribbon is suspended in the field of permanent magnets, and when sound waves start to ribbon and vibrate, having a magnetic line of force, most ribbon mics use a step up transformer that amplifies the signal voltage from the ribbon element. There are several kinds. There are several variations available now. When the ribbon mics are passive, some of the ribbon mics used in 1930s recording studios are still favored for today. I've been using a cloud lifter from a cloud microphone with this RM5 mic, which provides about a 25 dB clean gain. I need to focus the right part of it too. As my eyes are placed, and I record as much for on my time back. And I'll leave a link also for the Cloud Microphone website. 
Everything in the kit came well packaged and all the components were protected. The body of the microphone is a heavy duty stainless steel. Here's the output transformer with color coded wires. This is the ribbon motor which you can see is very well wrapped and protected. It is completely assembled with a foil ribbon in place. Be sure to keep your work area clean and make sure you don't have any small metal parts like screws or tools near the ribbon motor while you're building this microphone. The magnets are very strong and there's a possibility that you could damage the ribbon if something were to be attracted to it. The foil of the ribbon is only 2.5 microns thick. There are two caps that are inserted into the body. One side is for the XLR plug which is connected to the output transformer and the other side holds the ribbon motor. Both caps are held in place with small Allen screws. I bought a special screwdriver from Bumblebee Audio especially for these Allen screws. Remove the screws to take out the end caps and you'll also find that these caps are held in place by friction. I thought that the tolerances were a little too tight for me, especially if I were to service this microphone in the future. It was very difficult to pull them out. I had to pry one side out with a small screwdriver. So I used my Dremel tool and use a fine grinding, sanding, and polishing bit to carefully grind a little of the inside on each side of the tube. It only took around 15 minutes. There was still quite a bit of friction keeping the caps in place, but it will be much easier to remove them if I need to. The only tools you'll need to build the microphone kit is a good soldering iron and some soldering tools to hold the small parts in place. I can't emphasize enough how important it is to use a really good soldering iron when you're building your own electronics, guitars, and other projects needing soldering. One that heats up quickly and that you can control the temperature. This was a real game changer for me and I wish I had invested in one much earlier. I use a Heiko soldering iron and I'll leave a link for it in the description. Bumblebee Pro Audio has very good assembly instructions on their website and that link will be listed in the description. To start out, I clamped the XLR plug cap and soldered a jumper between XLR pin 1 and the ground pin. You can use a small piece of wire or clip a lead from an old component you might have already. I stripped a 20 gauge wire tinned it and soldered it in place. The jumper connects the cable screen to the body of the microphone and is required so that the body acts like an EMI shield. Next is preparing the output transformer. Twist the wires evenly, being careful not to pull too hard from where they attach to the transformer. Twisting is important for EMI immunity. I tend the ends of each set of wires. Made sure that they were even, and then I soldered the yellow and blue output leads to XLR pin 2 and 3. Yellow wire to pin 2, blue wire to pin 3. Bumblebee Pro Audio recommends that when you're soldering a male XLR plug to plug in a female XLR connector to act as a heat sink and a stabilizer for the XLR pins in case the plastic starts melting. I didn't do that because I have a very good soldering iron and I feel confident in my soldering techniques. But if you have a soldering iron that doesn't heat up efficiently or you're new to soldering, it'd be a good idea. A soldering iron that doesn't heat up quickly can be more damaging than a hot soldering iron because you'll hold it on the part longer to get the solder to melt. This is how you can damage the components. I made sure the wires were twisted tightly, 
being careful not to pull too hard from the output transformer, and then I inserted the transformer into the body from the bottom side. Line up the holes on the XLR plug and tighten. You'll notice that there is still quite a bit of friction here for me, but it's much easier to press in place after I did a little grinding. I carefully unwrapped the ribbon motor, making sure there were no metal parts and small tools around. and soldered the red and black transformer input wires to the terminals on the bottom pad of the motor. This was the most difficult part of this entire assembly for me. Especially, when soldering the red wire to its terminal. There's only a fine area that is etched away separating the terminal. I used a much thinner solder and was very careful not to bridge the tiny gap. I'm also using a Yachtu Sun LED head magnifier, which I'll leave a link for in the description. I wouldn't be able to do this kind of work without it. I'm also very careful not to blow on the solder joints. It works in most cases to cool down a solder joint, but in this case, it could damage the ribbon. I then screwed the ribbon motor to the top cap, being very careful to not let the nuts and the washers pull into the magnets and possibly damage the ribbon. I pushed the ribbon motor into the body towards the bottom of the microphone. You should use something that won't damage the ribbon assembly. I used a thin spatula with a plastic handle. The goal is to push the transformer as deep as you can to keep it further away from the ribbon motor when it's inside the body. The permanent magnet field from your motor magnets can influence the performance of the transformer if it's too close. Remember, all these instructions are posted on the Bumblebee Pro audio site in great detail. Be sure to go over them a few times before starting your own kit. Before inserting the motor inside, rotate it a few times in the same direction as you twist the wires. It will add some tension to the wires and it will form coils inside the body, making it much easier to force the motor inside. Keep rotating the motor if it feels a little stuck on the way. Around four to five turns should be enough. Close the cap and orient it properly to insert the screws. It should fit snugly in place. And now it's ready to record. Be sure to read the instructions on the Bumblebee Pro Audio website. There is important information on correct phasing, which is determining the front from the back of the microphone, and information about phantom power that you need to be aware of. As for determining the in-phase side of the mic, plug it in and record with it. You'll find out that one side sounds clear and full, while the other side, not so much. Mark the in-phase side. And there you have it. A completed microphone. This narration was all recorded with this microphone. 
And now I'm going to record a bit of my Dirty 30s Recording King resonator guitar. Okay, this is uh, the ribbon mic straight. There's no amplification. I'm just playing this uh, uh, without any pickups or anything. And it's coming in dry. Okay, on this track, uh, I'm going to add a little reverb, but it's still going in uh, just directly with the mic, nothing else, even though I'm, you see a pickup here, it's just the guitar.
And there you have it. This is the ribbon mic from the kit, the RM5 kit.